Hi, my name is Anne van Berkel. I'm working for GS Switzerland. I'd like to present you some insights on UDI and MDR and how to implement UDI with a GS1 system. In this short tutorial, you will see the identify part of UDI. You will see what the UDI DI is and how to create this important identification key. But before we start, we have a quick look at our disclaimer. Neither GS1 nor its member organizations or their staff have the authority to speak for the regulators or to grant exceptions. GS1 provides recommendations focused on GS1 standards. Neither GS1 nor its member organization and their employees assume no liability for the action taken by their members. To give you another support, we highlight on several slides some questions. These questions will help you on your journey to UDI. Let's move to the chapter identifying the UDI. We will start with identify or the identification key of the GS1 system to create the UDI. In order to create a uniform basis, we must first learn the basics of the GS1 system. Let's start with the GCP. The basis of all identification possibilities is the GCP, global company prefix. Sometimes this is also called GS1 company prefix. You receive this number with a membership of GS1 and if you buy a number range. The GCP is between 7 and 11 digits long in Switzerland and it depends on which number range you have licensed. With this GCP on the slide 7, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, you are able to create 100,000 GTINs. This number range is according to GS1 Switzerland and will be used for all examples in this presentation. If your own number range is used up, you can request a new additional one. We offer different number ranges from 10 till 100,000. We will see exactly how the GCP is put together afterwards into the GTIN and also into the basic UDI-DI. We will take a closer look at the most important identification possibilities, the basic UDI-DI. In the next few slides, I will talk about the UDI-DI. Let's look at the UDI-DI. We have heard that in UDI, the UDI-DI as UDI device identifier is called. In the GS1 system, we call this identification key JITIN. The global trade item number is used for the worldwide unique identification of products and services in the open supply chain. The JITIN is 13 digits long and has a numeric character. The JITIN is created from the GCP, the global company prefix. I will explain you now how the UDI-DI is built up. The base of the GTIN is the GCP, like I told. It's the 76 here in purple. This is the, G, uh, the GS1 prefix Switzerland number. The participant number here in orange, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, will be your company number and you will get that number if you get a member of GS1 Switzerland. As already with the basic UDI-DI, three parts of the UDI-DI cannot be changed. You can neither influence the GS1 prefix or the orange particip participant number or the red a number the check digit on the end. You as a member can only freely influence the green digits. So here it's marked with five O's or with five nines. At the end, a check digit ensures that the cheating creates created correctly. You can calculate the check digit on our homepage at www.gs1ch-angebote 
and then go to the page, page barcodes. Or uh, online check digit calculator can help you too. Additionally, we have an online tool to organize your GTINs easier, the GTIN registry. With the item reference method, a new UDIDI is assigned for each hierarchy level. In this sense, the base unit or the unit of use has an identification. The two packages also receives a new JITIN. And the box with maybe five of those two units also has a new JITIN. The next level, the box with example 10 boxes also receives a JITIN. You can also assign the pallet with his own GTIN. However, the pallet has to be a delivery unit. Basically, every unit who is for sale has his own GTIN. Here you see the information about the GTIN change. If you change, for example, the weight, the number, the language on the label, or you change, uh, changes are in the certificate, you have to change the GTIN. This is the only way you, your customer can understand the changes. Also think of all products on the market before and during and after the change. This was a short tutorial about the basic UDI-DI. I hope you enjoyed it. There are more tutorials about UDI. Check out on our homepage. Stay tuned and thank you very much.